So let's continue looking at loops. And um, as we know, loops are a way for us to actually repeat things over and over again. And eventually at some point you come out of the loop and the code that comes below the loop is actually executed. This is the standard uh, for loop statement. And as I've said, that's very, a very common notation that's used in lots of different programming languages and in PHP. Now, in the examples that we looked at before, um, the for loop often starts from a zero or from a one. Uh, that's the bit that comes. That, that's the bit that comes before before the first semicolon on the for line. But there's no real reason for you to do that. There's no reason to start from zero or one. You know, there are variations possible. So you might have a scenario, for example, let's have a look at an example here. You could start from a different number. So if you look at the first bit uh, before the first semicolon, you can see here it says counter equals five. So in this instance, our counter will start from five. And if we just process this loop, we have to think about what's actually going on here. It says the initial value for counter would be five. Our test says keep on doing the loop while counter is less than or equal to 10. And what we will do, what will we do? Each time we go around the loop, we're going to add one to counter. So counter will have the values, we'll start with five, we do something in the loop, six, do something in the loop, seven, do something in the loop, eight, do something in the loop, nine, <gasps> do something in the loop, 10. Now notice the less than or equal to, so that still returns true, so we do the thing in the loop, Add one to counter, counter becomes 11, and it's at that point that we drop out of the loop. So we don't actually have to start from a zero or one, we could start at some other number. Equally then, we don't actually have to uh, increment the counter. There might be um, occasions when you want to change the amount that you will increase the count by every time. So in this instance, we're going to have a counter called my counter, and you can see it starts with an initial value of five. And this loop will continue while my counter is less than 20. But have a look at the third part. You can see here we're doing something a little bit different. What's going to happen is every time we go around the loop, we're going to add three onto my counter. So we'll start with five, and then it will jump up to eight, and then it will increase by three each time we go round and round and round until we get to the point where my counter is greater than 20, in which case that returns false and we drop out of the loop. The other variation that we could have is one where instead of counting up, we count down. So have a look at these values. I'm gonna have a counter in this instance, it's gonna be called J, and J is gonna have an initial value of not zero or one, but it's actually gonna have an initial value of 20. And in this instance, we want that loop to continue while j is a number greater than zero. So we're going to go round and round the loop and then have a look at the third bit. And this is a sort of the opposite of the plus plus notation. Uh, minus minus basically is a shorthand that means subtract one, decrement. So j will start with 20 and then as we go round the loop, j will have one subtracted from it each time. So we'll go 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, etc., all the way down until j hits zero, at which point we will jump out of the loop. So let's have a look at a few examples of that. 